Shalom family, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. It's your brother, the preacher, and this is Torah Nuggets. This is chapter 28, 10 through 32, 3. And this week's Torah portion is named Vayetze, and he went out. Now, today's Torah nugget is called What You See Is What You Are. And I'm going to take the story of Laban and Jacob. Now, Jacob worked for his, his first wife, but Laban tricked him and basically gave him the elder sister and then had him work another seven years for his next wife. And so I, I'd like to take the, the, the portion of, of Scripture where Jacob is now, I've had the children, he's had his last child, Joseph, and... He wants to take his family and leave his 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 uncle and this kind of deal happens and I'm going to take this this portion of scripture and then we're going to talk about something as far as as what you see is what you are and guarding your eyes and guarding your your spiritual walk. But let's read a little bit Genesis chapter 30 verse 25 and it came about when Rachel had born Joseph and Jacob said to Laban, Send me away, that I may go to my own place and to my own country. Give me my wives and my children, for whom I have served you, and let me depart. For you yourself know my service, which I have rendered to you. But Laban said unto him, If now it pleases you, stay with me. I have divined that the Lord has blessed me on your account. And he continued, Name me your wages, and I will give it. But he said to, to him, You yourself know how I've served you, and how your cattle have fared with me. For you had little before I came, and it has increased to a multitude. And the Lord has blessed you wherever I turned. But now, when I shall provide, now when shall I provide for my own household also and so he said what shall i give you and jacob said you shall not give me anything if you will do this one thing for me i again will pasture and keep your flocks let me pass through the entire flock today removing from there every speckled spotted sheep and every black one among the lambs and spotted and speckled among the goats and such shall be my wages. So my honesty will answer for me later. When you come concerning my wages, every one that is not speckled or spotted among the goats and the black among the lambs, if found with me, will be considered stolen. Laban said, Good, let it be according to your word. So he removed that day the striped and the speckled or the spotted male goats and all the speckled and all the spotted female goats every one with white in it and all the black ones among the sheep and gave it to the care of his sons and he put distance of three days journey between himself and Jacob and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks then Jacob took fresh rods of poplar and almond and plain trees and peeled white stripes in them exposing the white which was in the rod and he set the rods which he had peeled in front of the flocks in the gutters even in the watering troughs there the flocks came to drink and they mated when they came to drink so the flocks mated by the rods and the flocks brought forth striped speckled and spotted Jacob separated the lambs and made flocks face towards the striped and all the black in the flock of Laban. And he put his own herds apart and did not put them with Laban's flock. Moreover, whenever a stronger or flock were mating, Jacob would place the rod in the sight. I want you to mind the word sight of the flock in the gutter so that they might mate by the rods. But when the flocks were feeble, he did not put them in. So the feeblers were Laban's and the stronger were Jacob's. 
So the man became exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks and female and male servants and camels and donkeys. <clears throat> Taking the excerpt or the, the scripture, so the flocks mated by the rods and the flocks brought forth striped, speckled and spotted. Genesis 30 verse 9. Jacob had difficult relationships with his father-in-law Laban. Not only had Laban cheated him out of seven years of working by swapping his daughter and Jacob's, at Jacob's wedding night, he continued to change Jacob's wages throughout their working relationship. After the birth of Joseph, Jacob told Laban he was ready to leave. Laban did not want to lose Jacob because he knew that God was blessing and increasing his flock only because Jacob was shepherding over them. So Laban agreed to start paying Jacob in livestock for his services. He agreed to give him all the striped, spotted, spe uh, speckled, and dappled born among his flock. Immediately after making this agreement, he removed all the solid colored animals and eliminated the possibility that Jacob would receive any live stock. That's why when we read, said he after he said, you know, my honesty, and then in verse 34, Laban said, good, let it be according to your word. And then he removed that day. So he, he, he set him up for failure is basically what happened there. And not, not to be so easily outmaneuvered, Jacob engaged in a little genetic engineering experiment. He peeled the sticks that make spotted, striped, speckled, and dappled patterns on them and placed the peeled sticks near the watering troughs during mating season. It was common belief that a vivid sight during pregnancy or conception would leave its mark on the embryo. Therefore, if the solid colored livestock saw the sticks while pregnant, they would give birth to striped, spotted, speckled young. It seemed to work. Jacob became exceedingly prosperous. From our modern perspective, this incident sounds dubious. Even Jacob was dubious of the trick. He later admitted to his wife that he credited, the, credited God's miraculous intervention with the results, not his stick-peeled trick. In 31, 8 through 9, if Laban spoke thus, the speckled shall be your wages then all the flock brought forth speckled and if he spoke thus the striped shall be your wages and then all the flock brought forth striped thus god has taken away your father's livestock and given them to me there is a lesson to be learned here and this is where i really want to focus as far as our torah nugget and the lesson here as we read on that which we place before our eyes affects the inner person remember he peeled back the the sticks and made certain kind of stripes and things to be able to 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 when the animal was mating and looking at these things it would actually it, it would actually affect the embryo and so jacob believed that the sheep looking at the striped sticks would bear striped young. That may or may not be the case, but it is certain or certainly true when we view things that are shocking, disturbing, immoral, violent, perverse. It affects, I want you to understand that putting stuff before your eyes affects the inner person and that which is born out of you. Not just your just children. I'm talking about your spirit man and that which comes out. Those temptations. Oh man, I hope you're hearing me now. Those temptations, those things that try to, to, to try to entice you because you're looking at them and you're feeding your inner man with these things. Those images leave an impact on us. Sometimes later, we give birth, as it were, through deeds actions speech patterns after these things we have been placing before our eyes i want you to, your your eyes is and your ears and the and your words that you speak are their gates i, I really want you to 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 grab onto this torah nugget today to help you 
to understand that you can you can overcome these things by being led by the spirit and being led by the word of god and let that penetrate you put the word of god in your heart in your mind in your soul and and let god god's spirit breathe on that and when that happens you begin to birth righteousness which is jesus jesus is the fullness of righteousness and so through our deeds, through our speech patterns, and after the things we have been placing before our eyes. For example, a person who watches television regularly cannot help but absorb the culture. That's why it's important to be careful what you're watching and who you're watching. And values expressed on television programs. The images he sees becomes a permanent part of his internal being because they are imprinted on his brain. The dialogue he hears begins to write new speech patterns in his mind. Why are you saying those things? I, you know, I've been hanging out with such and such for a long time and, and I start speaking like them. That's, that's, that's something that we ought to watch, that we ought to be aware of. This is why David declared, I will set no worthless thing before my eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall be fastened. It, it shall not fasten its grip on me. And that's what it happens. Whatever we gravitate to, whatever we cleave to, we start to, we start to produce those things. A perverse heart shall depart from me. I will know no evil. Psalms 101, 3 to 4. What, a, what an important thing to, to understand. And I, I would like to add a little bit to what we were reading here. Because it, it, it's very, very important that, I, that you get hold of this, this spiritual lesson even through what Jacob did in his an experiment what I'm going to put before them they're going to start birthing okay and 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 it says do not quench the spirit do not extinguish the spirit and then 21 says but examine everything carefully and hold fast to that which is good abstain from every form of evil or in the KJV it says abstain from every appearance of evil anything that even appears as evil we need to abstain from it you know we're constantly wanting to fast and things like this but there's some things that you literally need to just fast like forever from and then it says now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely completely and your may your spirit and soul your spirit man and your your will and your mind and your thoughts and your body spirit soul mind heart will and 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 your body because when we start when we start acting out these things it's with your body you do them be preserved completely without blame at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who calls you. He is also and also will bring it to pass. It very, very important. What you see is what you are. And this is why we ought to keep our eyes pegged on the author and the finisher of our faith. This is what we ought to follow. Man, this is your brother, the preacher. Support the ministry, dollar sign three, John one, five. That'll be changing shortly as we are going to incorporate and open our ministry, Kingdom Business Revival Ministries through sports, education, uh, outreach, evangelism, feeding the poor. I mean, helping people. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and empower people to, to draw closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I'm excited. You know, these Torah nuggets are, are awesome for our daily living. And I'm just excited to be able to, to come on here. 
Again, dollar sign three, John one, five, support all that we're doing in the schools, going out into the community. Man, I, I feel the wind of heaven in these, these, these days, these, these end times, you know, we are, we are bringing forth the gospel and we're going to, we're going to touch nations. We're going to touch places. So I'm, I'm happy as we're growing the YouTube channel, the Facebook, the Instagram, that you support the ministry, that you partner up with us and all that we're doing. Man, family, we love you. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Shalom, shalom.